Hey guys, Jen here. Today I'm going to go over some real estate exam math. Everyone's favorite, maybe not, but we don't need to be intimidated by it. It is going to be on the test, but there's not going to be a whole ton of it. I like to break things down in a simple way to understand and make things super easy to remember. If you guys are the same way, I posted my acronyms and key term phrases linked below. Lots of helpful stuff to make little tricks to remember things. So I'm going to do the same thing for the math today. Again, it doesn't have to be intimidating. There's not a whole ton of it. So let's just go over some key concepts and break it down simply and make a little diagram that's going to help you guys remember conversions for commission, which is a big thing on the test, parts, totals. Let's, um, let's get started. You guys will see what I'm talking about. So real estate math made simple, a favorite type of math when it is simple. So first off, we have our decimal and percentage conversion. It's easy to remember when you're looking at it like this, but I've noticed when I'm typing fast on calculator, I'll easily misplace a decimal or a zero, and then the whole problem's wrong. Usually you can see the numbers are off and fix it, but just an easy way to save time is to go slowly and be carefully. So remember to convert a percent to a decimal, you move the decimal two places to the left and drop the percent sign. 6% equals 0 0.06. Same thing for converting decimals to a percent, but in reverse. You move the decimal two places to the right and add a percent sign. So 0 0.06 equals 6%. With any question from the exam, if you know the formula, you can plug in numbers and get the right answers. That's the best way to do it is just to, just to know where to plug what into what. So in the next slide, we're going to go over the T this T diagram that I saw in a video a while ago, and it's helped me immensely on these math practice exams. And you can use it for multiple types of real estate problems, like figuring out commission rates, value of homes, multiplication problems, knowing when to divide what by what, et cetera. So on the exam or taking practice exams, we're gonna draw out a T. You have your part at the top, your total on the bottom left, and your percent rate on the bottom right. So this is division and this is multiplication. So what does this mean? So if you look at number one, if we have in a word problem, if we have the part and the rate, that's going to equal the total. So by dividing a, by dividing by a percentage, you're always going to get a bigger number. So for example, with our calculator, we have 150,000. And you divide it by 0 0.20, which is 20%. That equals your total, which is 750,000. So that was our part divided by our rate, which equals our total. Dividing by a dividing by a, per, a decimal or percentage is always going to equal a bigger number. So number two, if we have our total and we times it by the rate. So again, if we have $150,000 and we multiply it by 0 0.02, which is 2%, you get 3,000. That looks like a typical commit commission crunching question. So remember, dividing by a percent equals bigger number. Multiplying by a percent equals smaller number. And then if you have your part and your total and you're looking for the rate, you would divide your part by your total to get your percentage rate. So I need to see things to understand them. So again, if we have $150,000 and you divide it by the total, we'll call it $500,000. That equals 0.3, which equals to 30% after moving that decimal place over two spaces. So let's put this into a little more practice. Let's put that T into practice. Again, we're doing part, total, and rate. So to solve a percentage problem, there's three possible questions. We're gonna do one of them, the first one here. So what is the total amount if you know the percent rate and the part of the total amount. So what is the total amount if you know the percentage rate and part of the total amount? So you have percentage rate and part. 
What must you do to get the total amount? So again, we're going to divide the part by the rate. So if you had 6 and you divided it by 0 0.06, that's our part in our rate, that equals 100. Dividing by a percent always equals a bigger number. So let's do the other two options. Number two, what is the percent rate if you know the total amount and the part of the total amount? So you have your part and your total. So you divide your part by your total and that will give you your rate. So if our rate was six and our total is 100, that's going to equal 0 0.06. That's our percentage rate. What is the part of the total if you know the percentage rate? So your total times rate equals the part. 100 times 0 0.06 equals six. So I've seen this word for word on practice exams. It's super wordy. So if you're looking at it, it's probably easier. So that's why knowing this T will not only help with word problems like this, but it will help to easily plug in numbers and get the right calculations when you're actually using it for commission problems. So let's look at one. A salesperson received $3,000 for selling a house. This was 40% of the total commission on the sale of a $200,000 house. What was the commission rate on the sale? So we know the money the salesperson made, which was $3,000. And we know that it was 40% of the total commission on the sale of the house, which we know is $200,000, the total. So we're looking for what that percentage rate is. So if you sold a house for $200,000 and you made $3,000, what percent did your brokerage give you? So the easiest way to do these word problems is just to write it out so it looks a lot simpler. When there's a bunch of words, it's, it, it's intimidating. So draw the T with your part, your total, and your rate. We know the part is $3,000. That's the commission made. The rate is 40%. So the question asks for the commission rate he made. So first we have to figure out the total commission. So we divide our part by our rate, which is $3,000 divided by 0.4, that equals $7,500. So the total commission on that sale was $7,500. So now we can figure out what his commission rate was. What was his percentage of that? So we have the part, which is $7,500, and the total, which is $200,000, so 7,500 divided by 200,000 equals 3.75%. So 7,500, oops, too many, divided by 200,000 equals 0 0.0375. You move the decimal over two spots and you get his cut was 0.375%. So writing it out like this just makes it look a lot more straightforward and a little bit less intimidating. All right, here we are. So I hope that helped you guys with these word problems. It can seem intimidating. Remember to draw out that T, write down what you have, which will either be the part, the total, or the rate, and make sure you move your decimals appropriately when you're doing those calculations. So anytime you see these three words, part, total, rate, figure out which two of them you have, draw out your T, then you know to divide what by what. And remember that dividing by a percent will always equal a bigger number. Multiplying by a, by a percent will always be a smaller number. So out of everything in this almost 10 minute video, I feel like if you can remember this, those commission problems, those problems that seem intimidating but really aren't that hard, they won't be so bad. So again, don't waste a whole bunch of time studying math and finance for the exam because it's not gonna be majority of it, it's just a small portion. You could get one question, you could get, I've heard people getting up to 15. So just knowing these few concepts will hopefully help you guys so much um, next time.
I'm going to break down how to calculate your NOI, your net operating expenses. One of my acronyms for that is SOAR, subtract operating expensive expenses and replacement reserves from your effective gross income, and then how to calculate your adjusted basis for taxes, which my acronym is PICS, price of home plus improvements plus closing costs, subtract the allowable depreciation. So I like to make everything easy to remember again and make it as simple as possible. So I hope this helped you guys. If it did, let me know and let me know what else you'd like to see. We're all on our journey to becoming real estate agents. So best of luck studying you guys and have a great one.